Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com and this is Trading Places Live. It's Tuesday, May 17th, 2022, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a bit later this morning. Currently, we've got futures looking really strong. Um, it is option expiration week. <clears throat> I'll talk about that in just a couple seconds. Um, but right now, at least, uh, futures looking pretty good. We've got Dow futures up about 1.3%. S&P 500 futures 1.6%, NASDAQ futures up 2% today. So uh, really strong action, at least it appears that we'll get off to a strong start this morning. And again, it's option expiration week, so anything goes. Um, before I get into anything, let me go ahead and uh, go through today's agenda with you. Going to start off with that uh, daily market recap. I always like to start off with uh, what just happened. Then we'll get into talking technically. Um, international markets, going to look a little bit at some of the Asian markets, how they've been performing. Uh, earnings spotlight, then we'll wrap up with the three you uh, must see. Let me first take you over to earningsbeats.com. Uh, For those of you who are new, go to earningsbeats.com. You can scroll down. We do offer a free newsletter, Earnings Beats Digest, uh, three times a week newsletter. Very quick read, just a couple paragraphs and a chart. All you need is your name, email address. There's no credit card required here. You can unsubscribe at any time. Uh, it's just a great community of both professional and uh, individual investors. Um, we focus on education, uh, occasionally a little bit on market guidance, but for the most part, it's educational material that many of our community members use to trade in individual stocks. That's completely up to you. Uh, but uh, anyhow, if you go over to earningsbeats.com, scroll down, you'll find that. Love to have you. Also, uh, we started our spring special yesterday, um, and this is kind of a big deal. First of all, if you've never tried us or if you'd like to try us, um, you can go over to, to Earnings Beats and sign up for a 30-day free trial. This does require a credit card, just so we can get you set up in our system, uh, but you will not be charged the first 30 days, and you can cancel at any time. And we'll, we'll even remind you before your period expires. Uh, we don't want you signing up and extending if this isn't for you. Uh, but we think it probably will help you in some fashion or another. Um, but we're running a our spring special, which is the best deal of the year. If you click on this, you'll see that uh, you can actually sign up for an extended period of time and get earn some additional free time. So one year, you get two bonus months. Two years, you get six bonus months. Three years, we'll give you a full year for free. So you'll get four years for the price of three. Uh, that's a, absolutely the best offer we've ever offered. Uh, as it comes out on a monthly basis. If you sign up for 30 days and you just decide you want to keep it on a regular monthly basis, it's 147 a month. So you can see this deal right here takes it down to 62 a month, which is less than half of what you would pay per month by going with the monthly. So if you like the service and you want to commit, you're going to save a lot of money. That's the whole point. Anyhow, want to make sure you're at least aware of that. If you sign up for the 30-day trial, the spring special only lasts two weeks. But if you like the service and you sign up during this two-week spring special, we will tack on the time to the end of your 30-day free trial. It's not like you'd lose. You know, if you decide after day 14 and the special's ending, it doesn't mean you lose the rest of your trial period. You still keep that. Anyway, just want to make sure everyone's aware of it. Um, so again, go over to earningsbeats.com. And you can find out more information about all of that. All right, <clears throat> so let's get into this daily market recap. I'm going to go through these charts one at a time today, as opposed to showing you all 10 at once. <clears throat> the Dow Jones Industrial Average, after coming down, finishing uh, down just above, or excuse me, just below 32,000 level on uh, Thursday of last week, rebounded Friday, actually finished up 27 points yesterday. So we did finish in the positive on Monday, which was good. Um, I think with options expiring, we could see additional rally. Again, I'll talk more about that uh, later um, uh, today. We have a max pain event. By the way, this is a paid event. So if you do sign up as a trial member, you can come into this event tonight and it still doesn't cost anything. Um, but uh, these max pain events can be extremely beneficial. Uh, I don't think a lot of folks realize how impactful the monthly options expiration can be on the direction of the stock market. Anybody who was with us in March knows that we talked about the fact that the S&P 500 could rally very, very strongly back in March because of this huge decline, a lot of put interest, 
And then we saw that big move up. Um, this is similar this month. So I'll be talking about this later today. Uh, this will be worth the uh, entry fee into earnings beats, which is zero, by the way, for 30 days. Um, but anyhow, um, we got a lot to talk about there with options, but uh, the Dow getting off to a good start this week. Uh, S&P 500, not quite as uh, strong. We were up intraday, but we managed to come back down, close down almost 16 points. Uh, still holding above 4,000. So after closing below 4,000 for a few days last week, uh, we did come back up, close above on Friday, and we held that yesterday. So that was at least a maybe a minor positive there. The NASDAQ was hit a little bit harder yesterday, down over 1%. Many of the growth stocks got hit again yesterday. Um, it's going to be an interesting finish of this week, though, with these growth stocks. Again, I'm going to talk about that more at Max Payne later today. But uh, the Dow, or excuse me, the Nasdaq did finish down 1.2 percent yesterday. Then we had the mid caps. Mid caps down about half of one percent. But all of these indices put that low in on Thursday of last week, and I think that's going to be low. We're going to want to watch. Um, is that the ultimate bottom? I think it could be. Um, I don't know that it is. Even if we bounce from here, I would expect a minimum double bottom, you know, retest. There's just so much bad news out there right now. I just can't see how we'd, we'd avoid that. Um, but right now, at least we are getting that short term bounce off that bottom from last Thursday. Uh, and that was on the mid caps as well. Small caps. Um, actually, not sure what happened there to the small caps. Did I go right over it? Well, there was a small caps. Anyway, small caps down about uh, one third of 1% yesterday, but it, this group also bouncing off of that uh, Thursday low. Moving on to the sector. So energy, look at energy breaking out or trying to break out uh, right up to that high that we saw earlier in May after uh, falling back, testing the 50 day moving average right back up in this group. And as I mentioned before, you know, we had this negative divergence, lower PPO, higher prices, Normally, what I see is a 50-day test and or a PPO centerline test. That's what I always talk about. Look at energy, CPO, or, uh, CPO. PPO centerline test, and there's your 50-day test before turning back to the upside. So I think the negative divergence is out of the way. I think energy is free to go here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a pretty significant breakout, another move to the upside in energy. Consumer discretionary, mm, well, this one doesn't look so great. Uh, we did roll back over yesterday. It was the worst performing group uh, by far, down more than 2% yesterday. I wouldn't be surprised to see a move back to the upside, though. Um, we had a couple earnings reports out. One was um, um, Home Depot in the home improvement space. That one uh, should help give uh, the XLY a little bit of a lift today. I saw we were getting some rebound in the autos. Tesla was up this morning. So, Hopefully, uh, the XLY get a little bit of a lift. I think we can go to the 20-day. I'd be a little careful trying to get through the 20. Right now, that PPO is very, very bearish, pointing down as we go lower. That just means that the momentum is accelerating to the downside. And so when we get uh, bounces like this, we start to get into these bounces, anything at or near that 20-day EMA, I think, becomes a potential issue and a problem. Also, notice we broke down at about 161, 162 right here, and that's where the 20 day is. So getting back through 161 or 162, and I'm not see, saying we get there, I'm just saying if we do, that would be an area where I'd consider getting back out. Uh, I think that's where we could see that selling kick back in again and maybe uh, move back down to retest the uh, lows. Technology, same thing. I mean, PPO is very weak. Price action has been very weak. We're in the midst of a potential rebound 140 wouldn't sh wouldn't shock me uh that would be you know maybe another four or five percent move to the upside we'll see whether or not we can get there financials same deal ppo's weak price action week uh might get this rebound uh, maybe you know the thing is with the financials we couldn't get the financials going up when yields were going up and then when yields come down we can't get the financials going so right now the financials just can't get going but they are oversold and it is option expiration week. Don't be surprised if we see a little bit of a rally here. XLRE, real estate, the worst performing group for the last three to four weeks. I mean, 51 down to 41 and change. We almost had a bear market just in the last three or four weeks in the uh, real estate group. But this group also starting to bounce a little bit. If we can get a, a definitive move through this 43 level right here, 
I think we have a chance to go back up into this gap resistance area and maybe test that 20 day. All right, so that's the, um, those are the major indices and sectors I wanted to go over. Let's move on to the 10 year treasury yield. Um, so right now, actually this is not showing the morning action so far. Let me tell you what's going on with the uh, 10 year treasury yield. Right now we're up four basis points, 2.29, excuse me, 2.92%. Um, I, I think we're just in this sideways consolidation phase now. We had a huge run up right into the Fed meeting. Uh, the 10-year Treasury yield got up to 316. I think now that the Fed's out of the way, I don't know, the yield coming back down, I think there was a lot of selling that was going on in the uh, Treasury market. So I just think you're getting some folks coming back in a little bit, and that's sending the yield down. But I don't, I'm not expecting any kind of a huge move to the downside. I think there's an outside chance we go down and test this 50 uh, day moving average, because we do have a negative divergence here, lower PPO, higher yield. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a 50 day, but remember the 50 days coming up pretty rapidly. So we could just go back down maybe and, you know, test these lows between 265, 275. That wouldn't surprise me. That would then test the 50 day, bring that uh, PPO back down close to the center line. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about the economic reports that will be out today. Um, April retail sales coming out at 8.30 this morning. They are expected to rise eight-tenths of 1% after rising five-tenths of 1% in March. Uh, if we strip out the autos, retail sales expected to drop only four-tenths of 1% after last month jumping 1.1%. So we'll see whether or not that has the impact that it's expected when we strip out those autos. April industrial production expected to rise four-tenths of 1%. March rose nine-tenths of 1%. And then uh, April capacity utilization uh, expected to come in at 78.6, which is up from March's 78.3 level. March business inventories expected to rise 1.8%. February rose 1.5%. I know this is in the rearview mirror quite a bit. Here we are, you know, in mid-May talking about March and February. Um, but business inventories are building. And I don't think that's insignificant, by the way. You know, we had this surge in demand. And then we had supply chain issues, and that's what's caused the inflation. But, you know, when I see reports like the, the business inventories jumping 1.5% in February, 1.8% in March, it almost seems like we're gearing up for this continuation of demand, but I'm starting to see signs of a recession. So I think it's possible we could begin to see an oversupply uh, in inventories. And if that happens, um, that would be good news for inflation. Because, you know, that's been the biggest problem is we haven't been able to keep up with supply. You know, the demand has been so strong and supply has been lagging and it's been these supply chain issues that have been the problem. But if we're building inventories, we just had a negative GDP. Um, you know, if we keep building inventories and we get another quarter of negative GDP, that means demand's coming down, supply's going up. I don't understand how the inflation argument holds for the rest of the year. And that's what I've been saying for quite some time. So, and, and, and been wrong, by the way, I'll admit it. I mean, I, I really thought like the Fed that the inflation issue was going to be pretty short term. And it's turned out to be much longer term than uh, what I was expecting. So I'll readily admit that I was wrong there. Um, but, you know, there are no playbooks for a pandemic. I've been searching for a playbook, somewhat sarcastically. There are no playbooks uh, or handbook. You know, what, what's, what's the next step in a hundred year pandemic. I don't know. You know, we're all kind of, you know, going just flying by the seat of our pants here, trying to figure out the next thing in the market. But I, you know, when I look at business inventories building, just going back to economics 101, when inventories are building and we've got demand slowing with a potential recession, that should bring down, help to bring down inflation. So it's just something I wanted to point out. Now, this again was March and February, you know, we're now we're in mid May. I'd rather know what happened to business inventories in April. Uh, but we won't know that one for another month. Uh, and then the last report, May housing market index expected to drop. April was 77, May looking to go to 75. So continuing bad news there in the housing area. All right, um, let's move on to talking technically. And really all I wanted to do here was just, you know, take a look at the S&P 500. Um, and every once in a while, I like to you know, go look at different time frames. And I think it would be good maybe to look at this over a longer time frame because short term, it's bad. 
no matter how you slice this thing, you know, I was looking at this being a head, this being left side of the neckline and this being the right side of the neckline. So having a head and shoulder breakdown and then we move back up again. Well, I mean, I guess we could still use this as, you know, just draw this as the neckline. Now you got a down sloping neckline, um, which we ended up breaking down out of that would, you know, potentially mean a much more significant uh, drawdown here, much bigger drop where maybe the S&P 500 gets all the way down to that, you know, worst case 3,500. That was what I said coming into the year. 3,500 was kind of my worst case. I thought minimum we were going to 4,300. I expected maybe 3,800. Then I said worst case, I was thinking 3,500. Well, if you use that as your determinant, you know, determinant for the uh, move to the downside, if you draw your line across here from the head down to the neckline, which would intersect right at about here, probably close to 4,200 from 4,800, that's 600 points. So if you draw that and come down here to 4,100, which is where we broke, would have broken down, maybe I should annotate this. Let me just show you the neckline. So it'll maybe be a little clearer. But I mean, there's an argument. See, what I was saying was this was the neckline over here. And then this was the right shoulder. Then we had a breakdown, but then we came back up. So, you know, uh, this potentially could be where the neckline is. And if you notice, this neckline comes over and gets intersected right here to about 4,100. Well, 4,800 down to this point right here, this is right at 4,200, I believe. Let's just do a horizontal line here. Um, oh, right here. Because this is where you measure from the high down to the neckline. So 4,800 down to 4,200 is 600. And you break down at 4,100, that takes us 3,500. So this actually would argue for one more move to the downside. Um, it also would maybe argue for this bounce to continue for a little bit to test either the neckline or maybe the 20 day before moving back down one more time. So this is a chart, you know, I hadn't even looked at this to be honest until right now, but this is a chart that would favor one more leg down in 3,500. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that by the way. I don't know that I would wait you know, if I'm sitting in cash, I don't know that I would wait for 3,500. What if we never go there and then we go back up to all-time highs again later this year or next year? And you're still waiting for 3,500. I think it makes sense to at least be taking some position on the long side after this decline. I believe we're in a secular bull market. I've said that repeatedly. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, I believe by the end of this year or next year, probably not just depends on how long this selling goes on and whether or not it does extend a little bit further into the summer. I mean, the longer it goes on, the less chance that we're going to have of getting back to 4,800 by the end of the year. So I would probably at this point say we see a new high next year. But I do think we're going to have a big rally at the end of the year. And I think what I had predicted at the beginning of the year was that we would be somewhere around where we were when we did our... Um, I think it was right here. We were at about 4,660 maybe. I think that's where, where we were when we did the Market Vision 2022 event. And I said at that event, I thought we would be back to that level, which was 4,660 something, I believe. I, I may, may have said in, we were going to finish flat for the year. I can't recall, but I'm, I'm thinking it was 4,665. And I would not be surprised if we were back up close to that level, maybe even you know testing this area, which is just a little bit below that. I'm talking later this year. I'm not talking about next week. So relax. Um, but I think even looking at the, the inventory, the business inventories that I just pulled up, you know, the fact the inventories are picking up, I'm looking for inflation not to be the long-term problem. And granted, again, I'll admit it's gone on longer than I expected, but I don't think it's going to be the 1970s. I really don't. And I think once Wall Street begins getting wind that the Fed could possibly back off of raising rates, I think that's when the market, the bottom will be in. And I think that's when the market starts moving back up again. Anyhow, uh, looking at the S&P 500, I think we've got this move maybe back to about 4,100 or so, 4,150. Um, so, I mean, I could still see at least another three, maybe 4%.
on the S&P 500 from where we finished. I mean, we got one and a half um, with the futures. Let's see, right now, 1.54% is where I'm showing the S&P right now with uh, futures. So clearly, you know, that's, that's 60 points. That takes us to 40, 70-ish uh, above where we've been. Um, wouldn't take much more really to get us back to the 20 day. So I'm not really making it bold, bold of a prediction at this point. Anyway, um, let's move on and talk a little bit about um, some of these international markets. I don't know if you're aware of this. And I usually don't use this to go in because I, I do most all of my, my trading and all of my analysis on the US market. But if you go to this market summary right here and just click on that and then scroll down, you'll get down to um, the MSCI iShares, all these international ETFs. So if you wanna trade any of these ETFs, you know this is, this is where you would go right here. Um, take a look at some of them. And if you just click on each one, it'll give you this little small six month chart of where things have been going. But if you look, I mean, Australia, which I'll show you in a minute, Brazil and Canada, had some pretty good moves in March and April back to the upside. I'll show you, here's Australia. So here was the Australian market, the move there. <clears throat> and then right back down again. Um, Brazil, huge move up to start this year, January through beginning of April, and then back down. And then Canada, same thing. Uh, January, February, March sideways, but then end of March, early April, we went up, set new highs there before a pretty steep decline. I mean, we've gone down probably about where we are right now, maybe 11 or 12% from the high. But um, previously, I mean, we were down, I don't know, 17%, 16, 17%, something like that in just five or six weeks. But again, that was coming off of much more elevated level than what we've seen here in the US. But I mean, we could go down the line in all many of these other um, you know, just look at the downtrend. This isn't just a U.S. thing. If you're not really paying attention, uh, Mexico has been holding on to these lows right here. But And Mexico is another one did really well, late March, early April. But it too came all the way back down. There's Netherlands. Of course, Russia, big drop. And then the war, and yeah, it's just a mess there. Singapore continues to go down. South Korea down. Spain down. I mean, everywhere. This is a global... Um, bear market. And I think global cyclical bear market, a lot of folks will, will argue with that. And that's fine. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just giving you my opinion. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. I wanted to go and look at some of the uh, Asian markets on a little bit longer term basis. So let's um, pull up. Uh, let's start with the uh, Nikkei. And here is the, um, I'm going to actually pull this up on the five-year weekly chart. So here's the weekly chart. And you can see we got the double top. We've been moving lower. Um, but we've held the triple top breakout that we had back in November of 2020. So I think 24, 25,000. This is where we came down in the 24,000s. Notice these tops were in the 24,000s. So I think as long as you stay above 24,000 here, I'm good. And actually, I think this is a pretty decent looking uh, chart longer term. I think we got, you know, had a huge move, double top, sideways consolidation. We've been drifting lower, probably being dragged by everything, all the other markets lower. But I think when we come out of this, I believe uh, the uh, Nikkei could do extremely well on a relative basis. So I'm, I'm still uh, pretty bullish here on this index. The uh, Shanghai. Now, a lot of folks always, you know, I'll see a lot of times in the... Um, uh, you know, CNBC and just in the media, how there's a lot of stories, this or that's happening in China and how we're supposed to believe that that's going to have a major impact in the U.S. And if you look at long-term correlation between our market and Shanghai, I mean, I would say that the correlation is as weak as just about any country. I mean, if you want to see strong correlation, and, and let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's uh, go down, let's get rid of the volume there. Try and pick this, the pace up here just a little bit. Take that correlation. So this is the correlation down here on the bottom. 
I mean, you can kind of see ups and downs and ups and downs. It's not a straight line across where we just go along with whatever's going on in China. Let me show you the difference. I'll show you one more chart here and then we'll move on. Here's the German DAX. Look at the correlation here. So, and, and of course the DAX has been getting pretty, hit pretty hard, came down big in February, bounced pretty nicely. And now still sitting well above that February high, which by the way, the US, you know, we went back down, and set new lows. So on a relative basis, Germany's been doing a little bit better than we have. But still, my point here was the correlation. If you want to know what's going on around the world that could impact us, follow the German market. All right, earnings spotlight. Um, well, let me tell you where we are right now on Take Two Interactive. Uh, take Two is up 5% in pre market. And Take Two beat on their earnings 116 versus 101. But that move to the upside at this point would simply take us up a little above 115. So we're still below the 20 days. So yeah, the gap up's nice, but we're still in a downtrend. So I don't really see anything huge here. Next up, how about Home Depot? Home Depot currently up $9 in pre-market, 305.52, up 3%. That's getting back above the 20. What we really want to do is get back up above about 320, not the 20 day, but $320. Because that's where a lot of this congestion lies. I mean, eventually we've got to get through this gap resistance. That's going to be the biggest number on the chart. You can see all the volume that sold from that level. But if we get through 320, I think we have a chance to fill that gap. So 320 would be the next big step. Um, so today we get up above the 20. We'll see if we hold, but we've been doing this, you know, above the 20, below the 20 for a while. The other one that I wanted to talk about, Walmart. Walmart down almost $10 in pre-market, $6, or excuse me, 6.56%. Um, and that takes us down to 138, which is all the way down here. Big, big gap down on Walmart after they posted their results, which was a miss, 130 versus 146. So a little problem there. Uh, Home Depot, by the way, beat 409 versus 367. So you had Home Depot, which had been trending lower, which beat Walmart, which had been in a nice uptrend just prior to the last few weeks, and they missed, and they cited uh, higher energy and food prices. So inflation definitely have an impact, having an impact at Walmart. All right, um, the three you must see, I'm gonna go through these kind of quick. First, I'm gonna start off with Boeing. Uh, Boeing, these are three stocks that were hit pretty good yesterday or just haven't been very good performers of late. Boeing, big drop down. I think it's oversold, probably gonna have a bounce. Wouldn't be surprised with options expiring this week to have a bounce here. Disney, also downtrending, probably due for a bounce. Watch that 20 day if we get one. And then the last one I wanted to show you was Apple. Apple has been downtrending. Look at it go down below 140 from a high recently near 180. I'll just say this. There was an article I wrote back on January 4th saying about the, talking about the big divide, but then a wild prediction for Apple. If you come down to Apple down here, it had been in this uptrend, but it had a negative divergence. It was at the top of its channel. And I actually had predicted right here. I said, I'm taking the other side and believe Apple could see a 20 to 30% slide. That was more than 20% when we went down below 140. So Apple definitely made that big move to the downside. I think we're due for a little bit of a bounce here as well. Anyhow, that's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow over at earningsbeats.com for your next uh, trading places live. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.